Well hello everybody, Jeff here on this Learn Portrait Drawing channel and in this video we are going to see how I drew this portrait right here. Now this main topic of this video is going to be called Finding Success in Failure. See, I don't consider this necessarily to be my best work. In fact, I struggled a lot with this in so many different ways and uh, I still wanted to share it with you. Even though it's not my best, even though uh, I made a lot of mistakes and I didn't get the likeness down, all these things that uh, a lot of us would consider to be failures. Uh, in the very end, we do end up making a pretty decent portrait. Uh, so I wanted to share that with you and let you see the journey that it took me to come up with this picture right here. So again, not my best work, but uh, I think we ended up doing something fairly decent with it and we can learn something from our struggles. Learn something from what we consider to be failures as an artist and turn those into something positive. So that being said, before we get into watching how I drew this and all my thoughts behind it, I just want to say thank you for watching and if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button really means a lot to me. I have a video that comes out every Monday and every Thursday. So, with that being said, let's watch how I drew this portrait right here. Finding success in failure. Okay, so here we go. Um, I started drawing this with a circle. So, well, my rough, my rough idea of a circle, let's put it that way. So we just start out with the circle here. I'm just trying to get an idea of maybe, you know, the, the cranium of the head. And uh, I'm going to do a lot of this drawing uh, using the Riley method or the Riley abstraction, which is sort of a way of putting the features onto the face by using a lot of um, lines. Uh, so you'll see here I start off with a line about in the center, which is going to represent where the brow is, sort of like the, the start of the eyebrows. And then she's not exactly looking center, so I'm drawing this vertical line off center a little bit, trying to mimic sort of the direction of her head. You know, there's more of one side of her, of her face showing than the other. And then I'm putting a line here for kind of where I'm guessing the nose is going to be. And then up top here is sort of the the hairline. Usually these are equal, which is why you see me using my hands. But I know in this picture, her nose to her chin is greater than the nose to the brow. So you'll see me here taking a bigger measurement and putting that for the chin line. Now I don't know if this is all correct at this point, but this is just me guessing. And so that's kind of where we're starting. So then we want to see where's the side plane of the head. Where, kind of where the temple is and so I'm drawing a little half circle here to kind of represent sort of the side of the the, the head so this is the brow line this is the side of the head kind of here I'm kind of getting an idea where's the eyes gonna go so if we divide this into thirds like one and one we have thirds here usually the first third is kind of where the sort of the eyes are going to go, the eye line. So I'm kind of just thinking here, how do I want to best go about doing this? Um, I'm really not looking a whole lot at the picture. I mean, I am, but I'm not. I'm, I'm kind of using these lines as a standard um, to kind of just, you know, see how well does the Riley rhythm hold up to this particular picture. So I know the nose is at an angle, so I'm kind of just trying to mimic this angle here and put the nose down. It comes out to about here maybe, I'm just guessing, you know, so it goes straight down. So I'm, I'm kind of blocking in basically where I think the nose is going to go. So something like this. Kind of asking myself, how wide is the nose? Maybe about this wide. Just 
So now that we have that first third here, we kind of know this is this is where the, the, the rhythm of the forehead's gonna go, this circle right here. Even though you don't see it on her in the picture, I'm drawing these lines just to kind of get these Riley lines down. And see that line there? That's sort of where the eye line's gonna be. And what that did is it kind of formed the eye sockets right, right in this area. So here I'm trying to think of like this rhythm where the, you know, where the, the muzzle's gonna be. Um, you know, well first let me start off by putting where I think the eyes are gonna go. So I'm thinking the eyes are gonna start about here. And an eye is about equal distance across. So I'm using my pencil to kind of get the equal distance of the eye right about like that. So all three of those are about equal. So I'm making little little dots there, just as little anchor points, so I know where I'm gonna have it. And now I'm just checking the angle measurement from the outside of the corner of the eye to the corner of the nose. Just to double check if I have the eyes and the nose in the right spot. And I think I do at this point. Again, I'm not too sure. And so again, uh, I don't need to draw all these lines. In fact, I think on my next drawing, I'm not going to do this. It was it kind of crowded the picture. It added a lot of information that um, I didn't really need. But I, I just I had so much success using this Riley method on my last portrait that I wanted to try and do a lot of it here with this one. Um, but again, I think this kind of ended up confusing it for me. I'm trying to figure out where the, the mouth line's gonna go. So I'm taking a measurement of the eye, a couple eye widths apart, and dropping it down, and kind of seeing that's about where the mouth starts. The distance of two eyes straight down is about the corner of the mouth. And so I'm using those corners to kind of get this rhythm here, this circle that I'm putting here, this sort of like the, it sort of represents the muzzle of the mouth. I'm trying to get that down. And also I'm trying to focus on where the, the, the side of the head's gonna be over here. So if the chin's down here, kind of looking at how the jaw line comes up and then meets with the cheek. And that just kind of gives me a rough idea maybe of where the side of the face is gonna be. And then here's the hair, kind of just guessing that direction. Since the hairline's up here, I kind of figure the hairline comes across and then down over here off the side of the head. And see, we're kind of just framing the face. We're just framing our best guess of the face. You know, over here, kind of comes straight down. And again, where the jawline meets the chin, looking at this angle, and just figuring something like that. All right. So now I'm kind of thinking about the mouth. This is a very tough one for me. Oh, my doorbell, sorry about that. One second, please, let me go get my door. Okay, sorry about that. Someone was at my door, I had to make sure they weren't uh, trying to break in my house. <laughs> All right, so back to the drawing. So uh, these are more rhythms of the Riley method. This big line here represents sort of like the outer cheek area. And, uh, you know, I, again, I, I didn't need to draw all these. You don't necessarily see them too much on, on the picture, um, but I did it anyway. So this is sort of these cheek rhythms here, comes up to the nose, out across the eye. And not only is that forming the cheeks, it's forming this circle right here. See this spot right here? That's where the eye, sort of the eyeball is. It fits nicely right in between all those lines. So that's what I like about this rhythm is it gives me a spot to where I know the eyes are gonna go. And this is a little brow sort of like the, the brow ridge up in here. 
It's kind of like the height of where the eyebrows would be. And, um, yeah, this is uh, basically everything so far except for the mouth. Now, the mouth, I knew this was going to be a tough one for me, this drawing, uh, because she has such a big, wide smile. And, uh, A, I'm, I'm really bad with drawing open mouth uh, pictures. Uh, it's just, it's a little difficult for me. Uh, but again, I, I felt so good on my last drawing. I picked this one for that reason. Whenever I have a drawing that I'm due and I feel really good about it, like my last one, uh, I tend to pick something harder for the following drawing, just to challenge myself, give me something different. So that's why I picked this picture. I knew it was going to be a challenge with this uh, big smile. Uh, and you'll see it gives me a lot of uh, issues and trouble and I'm not exactly happy with how it turned out in the end, but I am satisfied that I gave it my best effort. So here we are just guessing kind of the mouth. I'm just pen penciling in a big area here where it's going to represent a big smile. And this whole stage right here, except for a couple of the pencil dots that I marked for the eyes, this is all being used with my um, soft vine charcoal. So it's really, really soft charcoal that you can easily erase with your finger and smear it with your finger. Uh, and it's good for these early stages of my drawing. So here I'm just kind of checking the width. Um, just seeing how wide do I have it. If I, you know, if I'm making her face too too wide, I don't want to do that. So I'm bringing it in just a little hair. Um, that's one of the things I'm noticing with fine charcoal that can be tricky, is because it's so soft and it draws really thick lines. Those lines could blur and hide the true value or the true thickness of something. So if I'm drawing something and I want it to be a certain size, if the lines are really thick, it could distort the, the size I'm trying to record. So you can see it's kind of already smeared over here on the right hand side of the page from my hand. Just one of the positives and negatives of using fine charcoal. Positives and negatives. It smears easily. So if you don't want to lose your lines, it could be a bad thing. But if you're doing what I'm doing and using this as a big rough draft, then it's fine, perfectly fine. So now I'm using my pencil, which doesn't really smear, to put these marks down, these anchor points that I know will not smear, these little dots. So I just kind of mark the chin, mark the hairline, I'm marking the side of the face over here because I don't want to lose this mark. So I'm kind of using my pencil to record sort of these hard lines, these lines that I know I'm going to keep. And again, at this stage, you know, it's even with all these lines on the picture, you could still kind of see that it's similar to the picture we're looking at. That's the goal. That's what we're trying to get here. We're trying to get something, an abstract shape that mimics what we're looking at. Okay, you can't look at what I've drawn and go, oh yeah, that looks like this person. But you can look at, or, or you should be able to look at what I've drawn and go, yep, that's her pose, that's her smiling, that's where her eyes should be, you know. So that's where we're going at right here. We're just trying to get an outline, a road map of where the portrait's going, the direction it's going in. So I'm just kind of penciling in roughly kind of her hair shape here. You can see it's just a bunch of scribbles. And look how soft it blends, that vine charcoal. Now you'll notice everything's gonna blend really softly except these those dots, like the dots on the corner of the mouth because that's, those dots are what I use my actual pencil with. Those don't really smear. But this vine charcoal smears quite easily. So I'm smearing it all in. 
because I have my little anchor points down. I, I kind of could still see my lines, kind of see where the eyes are going to go. Plus, I have those dots there. And so at this stage of the drawing, I'm pretty happy with what we have so far. I'm not yet feeling total despair and complete, uh, <laughs> complete disaster that I usually feel with my drawings. You know, it was said and it's been said that for probably every artist, every, at least for me it's true, at some stage of every drawing, there is a, oh crap, what am I doing phase. There's a phase of your drawing where you go, what am I doing? Uh, I'm completely messed up. Uh, this is garbage. And uh, I should never pick up a pencil again in my life. That happens to me with every single drawing. Now, it hasn't happened to me in this drawing yet. But trust me. It's going to happen, and I'm going to tell you exactly when that happens in this drawing. There's a point in this drawing where I basically tell myself that I should never, ever try and draw ever again. Uh, and if that happens to you, too, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know. Drop me a comment down below. Uh, and if you're a new artist, I want you to know that that's completely normal. That you should never just go, I can't draw because look at this drawing that I gave up on. This drawing you're seeing me draw here, uh, I wanted to give up on so many times. Uh, and I'm going to show you again where, <laughs> where and when I, I thought I should just give it all up. Um, but the key is not to give up. The key is to keep going with it and to find out where, you know, what part of the drawing is giving you doubts, what part of the drawing is making you feel like a loser, and then asking yourself, what can I do to change that? I'll explain more as we go along. But right now at this stage of the drawing, I'm just looking at the picture, you'll see my head glancing back and forth, back and forth. I'm just trying to Get the shadows down and the shapes down of the eye. Now, I, I probably made her eyes maybe a little bit big, I'm thinking, but I'm not sure at this point. At this stage, there's not a lot of judgment. I'm kind of hyper-focused on just shapes. Shapes and angles. What's the angle of the nose? How, what angle is that nose coming out at? You know, so I'm kind of just drawing in where the nostril is, drawing the ball of the nose right here. I'm seeing it's kind of coming up at this angle. Maybe not. Maybe I maybe I have to adjust the angle a little bit, um, a little more out more. It's kind of looking a little straight down to me instead of out at an angle, but. Uh, Again, a lot of times when you're drawing, you don't notice things right away. Um, instead, you notice after. So I'm drawing sort of the bridge of the nose right here with that line. Just to kind of give my brain uh, something to focus on. And I'm trying to draw the nose at that angle. You know, it's not straight on. It, it kind of comes out, you know, she's kind of tilting her head a little bit to the left. So that's kind of what I'm trying to get down here. So we're going to shade in the eyes a little bit, just kind of get some value in there. And then I'm double checking kind of where the eye is. And I'm looking at the angle of how the eye starts. So here's the top of the eye, right here. I kind of go back and forth just to make sure we're on the same line, the same level. And I'm gonna draw this angle right up to it like that. And that's a good way to kind of get the eye 
shape. Now, I think I made her eye, this eye in particular, a little too open. If you look at the picture, it's more squinty. I guess I made a, a little too open. Um, I kind of catch that a little near the end. Um, my final picture doesn't really correct it, kind of leaves it a little more open than usual. But, again, that falls sort of under the category of why I wasn't too happy with how this turned out, but it still turned out okay. That's sort of my feeling of this whole picture. But again, I'm posting it here on YouTube with my commentary for that reason. If I just posted every picture that I did that I felt super fantastic about, then it wouldn't be honest. I wouldn't be honest with you guys. And I want this to be an honest channel. I want you to watch it and know that I still struggle, that I still do drawings that don't turn out exactly the way I want. I want you to see that. I want you to know that it's okay to, for, for that to happen. It's okay for you to do that. And if something doesn't turn out exactly the way you want it, it doesn't mean it's a failure. You learn from every single drawing that you do. And so use these moments as a way of growing, as a way of, you know, building off of your last drawing and improving going forward. So again, uh, back to the drawing here, I'm kind of just kind of getting the, sort of the shadow of that inner corner of the eye, how it goes up to the eyebrow and makes that eyebrow arch. And now kind of looking underneath her eye, she's kind of got little lines, little squint lines from, from her smiling. So I'm putting that in there. A little, little dark, but uh, at this stage, I'm not that concerned about it. I'm seeing this shadow underneath the nose, so I'm kind of getting that in here, this sort of triangle. Marking that and then shading it in. They always say you got to be careful about this shadow because you don't want to make them look like uh, Adolf Hitler. Uh, but <laughs> now that I say that, that's all I can think about. But uh, it actually, at this stage, we're just marking in my shadows um, so that I have a placeholder for it. Now I'm looking at these smile lines here, trying to get it down. Now, one of the mistakes I make, and I'll outline it later when I realize that I'm probably failing on this drawing, but uh, you don't have to draw every single line. If you, you know, if you look at her, she's got these really nice smile lines on her face coming from her nose down to her mouth, but you don't really have to emphasize that if you don't want to, because it, doing so can make them look older than they really are. It could make them look like the Joker on Batman, or it could make them look like they have wrinkles. These are all things that you're gonna see at one point of this drawing, I tried to put all this detail in, and I realized, you know what? You don't have to put it in. Yes, it's there on the picture, but you don't have to put it in, or else you're gonna make them look like a scary mannequin or something. Um, and that's something I kind of learned in this drawing. So here I am trying to get sort of the shape of the mouth, starting with the corners and kind of working towards the middle, just so I can try and get the right angle of her smile. Again, this was very, very hard for me. I can't stress that enough. Um, as a self-taught artist, as someone who's never gone to art school, um, this is all me taking my best guess. So I'm drawing the inner corners of the mouth, and that kind of forms sort of the blocky area inside where the teeth are going to go. And then just sort of lightly shading sort of the upper lip area. Trying to be mindful of where the mouth comes out to, this corner. 
I don't want the lips to be too thick either, so I'm trying to ask myself that. I'm trying to ask myself how far does this bottom lip come down? Maybe right in here. I'm looking at the size of the chin and making sure, okay, does this look about right? She's got this shadow underneath here, so I'm kind of trying to keep this shadow in here. And again, at this stage, I'm still feeling okay. Uh, I'm actually panicking a little about making the teeth here. Now, to do the teeth, I, I basically am drawing the gum line. So you got these little triangles inside the mouth, which form the gum line. And if you get those down right, it kind of your brain will translate those as being teeth. You don't got to draw the line per se of every single tooth, but just drawing these little triangles, you'll see it, it kind of gives your brain uh, creative license to, to fill in the blanks and your brain will see this as teeth. So, again, at this stage, I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's still okay. You know, I'm looking at the picture. I'm looking at my drawing. Um, it's looking like, okay, this could probably turn out to be really, really good. Now, notice, my, notice that the eyes are a little big, at least the one on the right side of the screen is a little big. That's something, like I said, I never really fully correct, but sometimes it's a matter of if you don't correct it, can you still make it look good? Can you still make it look okay? And, and you can see it doesn't look horrible. That eye doesn't look horrible. It just looks like, okay, it's bigger than the picture, but that's fine. You could still have a really nice drawing, even if you detour away from the reference. So you can see the mouth, it's starting to, I'm really kind of focused on it. Uh, the more I'm darkening the side though, I'm kind of shrinking the teeth and that's kind of not what I'm going for. So I'm kind of I'm trying to get the bottom of the teeth down, the little baby triangles at the bottom. But it's starting to get real messy here. It's starting to get a little too messy in that in the mouth. But again, I chose this for a reason. I knew it was going to be a pain. I knew it was going to be a challenge. I knew it was going to be tough. Um, but you never really learn if you don't do that, right? You got to pick drawings and angles and features that are tough so you can practice so here we are kind of working on this side of the mouth where the, the smile line is now I don't know if I have this angle correct again it looks kind of it does, see, here I'm trying to check the angle, but... Oh, sorry, my head keeps getting in the way. So I'm trying to bring the mouth up just a little bit more. I mean, she really has a full smile, so I wanna, I'm trying to make the mouth as full as possible. Bring it as far out over here as I possibly can. And I think I have the nose maybe a little too thin or a little not as wide as the picture. You know, I'm starting to notice that. But we're not there yet. We're, we haven't we haven't realized that yet. We're going to realize that in the future. So here I'm just looking at the picture. I'm trying to figure out where do I think the shadows are going to go, you know. 
and I'm just shading it in. Now one of the mistakes I do make on this, one of the many mistakes, uh, I wanted to try and make it darker, like more contrasty than the actual picture. And so I end up kind of making it too dark. I kind of I kind of make it darker than I should and then I regret it and then I, I spend a lot of time trying to lighten what I what I shaded. You'll see as we go along. Um, but I'm just saying that now so when the time comes I do a lot of erasing, you'll understand why I'm doing the erasing and what my thought process was. Now, everything you're seeing so far, up until this point, the, the speed at which I'm drawing, uh, this is double speed. It's literally double the speed of me drawing. So right now, we're probably almost 30 minutes. We're almost 30 minutes into the actual drawing. So that means in real life, I was about one hour into the drawing. What you're seeing right here was, it took me about an hour to get to this point. Now again, a lot of that was because I was drawing all those Riley lines and everything else. I don't think I'm going to do that on the next drawing. Um, but, you know, that's okay. And you can see it's looking, it's looking a little rough. Um, there's a lot of lines. It's kind of cartoony looking. Um, we haven't done any blending. We haven't done too much yet. This is just me trying to figure out where I'm going to put the shadows at. So underneath here in the nose, I know it's darker. So I'm, I'm, I'm darkening that. That's going to be a darker shadow. This right here is dark. This side up here I could see is the side plane. That's dark. You know. It's a little darker here. But again, I'm making it too dark. By mistake, I'm making it too dark. I shouldn't be making it this dark. Um, the original picture is not that dark. Uh, it ended up kind of confusing me a little bit. But uh, again, learn as we go. So I'm trying to get this angle down here for the mouth. You know... Like I said, the mouth's really big, so I want to try and maintain that. Under the eyes, we got lines here. A little shading over here on this side is a little bit darker. Again, I'm going too dark, but that's all right. I learned from this drawing. I learned I'm not going to go this dark on my next one, not unless I see a lot of dark. But there's no sense in putting things down that aren't there to begin with. So I'm, about, I'm trying to figure out where the ear is. Looks like it's right about here, a little lower than the nose. And you don't see much of it. You just see this little sliver and then the hair kind of comes down. So I'm kind of just Making sure that it's out for enough, further, further enough, far enough. <laughs> I can't English today. All right. Never know what you're going to hear on these tutorial videos. My mind just goes crazy. It just wanders. All right. So I th I'm thinking the mouth is kind of, the shape isn't exactly there. It looks like it kind of, my mouth kind of goes down. I don't know, if you look at hers, it almost looks like it's straight across. But mine kind of looks like it's more angly. Um, that's something I do try and correct later on. I'm not sure how successful I was in correcting it.
but it's funny just knowing how the final picture turns out this looks completely different than how I ended up making the final picture which I do think the final picture turns out pretty decent I just don't like it as far as what I was going for what it took to get there uh, how much I lost sort of the likeness of the model those are all things I'm unhappy with but as an overall picture I do like how it turned out uh, looks it ended up looking okay so here we are starting to blend in now look how dark this makes it so again I kind of did it on purpose I was trying to go for dark and make something really contrasty uh, but I overdid it I was too dark in the darks areas and not dark enough in the other areas and it just ends up looking really really not that great at this stage so you're gonna see here I'm, I'm starting with the darks and I'm gonna blend towards the light so here I'm blending up towards the cheek here's the dark part of the nose I'm gonna blend it towards the cheek that way it stays dark where I want it to stay dark but then it carries over that tone down into the other areas but look how dark it is it's uh yeah it's definitely I definitely went too dark on this and I end up spending a lot of time trying to correct it So what you're seeing me use here is just my little blend homemade blending stump. It's just a rolled up newspaper that I taped into like a pencil shape. And that smears the charcoal pretty well. You could use any other blending stump. This is just what I've been using. Um, you can use a Q-tip. You can use tissue paper. But this is actually old junk mail newspaper ads that I, that I rolled up and made. So I'm just blending through, I'm, I'm kind of just going through the whole drawing and lightly applying the, the charcoal, blending it into it so it kind of gets, I, I didn't want any white like pure white of the paper to show. So I'm using this stage to kind of just apply charcoal all over the drawing. So it kind of looks, even though it's blotchy, you're starting to kind of see like a, like a sculptor sculpting clay it's starting to look a little more three-dimensional again it's not smooth but because of the shadows it's starting to look a little more three-dimensional but again because I went so dark on it I'm, I start struggling with uh, being able to reconcile the lights and the darks it, this one gave me a lot of trouble. I, I, I created the trouble myself. I definitely made my job a lot harder with this drawing. So now that I blended everything in, I'm going to go back over it with a pencil and kind of start to refine the features again. So we're going to try and lock in this eye a little bit. So we're redrawing the eye now that we've kind of smudged it and smeared it. I'm just trying to look at the shape of the eye. I'm trying to see, does it come, you know, is it, you know, is it open? Is it squinty? Is it closed? Is it, you know, what's, how, how, what's the shape? What's the shape like? And you ask yourself these questions when it comes to features, you know, is it, is she, is her eyes wide open or are they more squinty? Well, if they're more squinty, then you know you don't make the eyelid quite so open, quite so high. You might make the bottom eyelid more straight across. 
So that's kind of what I'm thinking here. I'm kind of asking myself, is the eye too big? Is it the right shape? You know, I'm making it too dark. Yes, I am. <laughs> but that's okay. This drawing goes through a lot of stages. You're going to see there's going to come a point uh, coming up. And I'll let you know when it is. But coming up, there's going to be a point when you're going to see that I start drastically changing what I've done. There's my doorbell again. Okay. So I'm also asking myself too at this stage, you know, how much do I want to draw of what I'm seeing? You know, again, she's got a lot of um, these sort of smile lines underneath her eyes. So I initially draw those in there. But later in the drawing, I'm going to change my mind and rethink that because I didn't want to make her older. Sometimes, you know, you you try and draw what you see and that's fine. But just understand if, you, you know, you got to be real subtle with things because something so small can end up looking like a wrinkle or looking like you know making somebody look old uh, that's something I struggle with and you're gonna see with all because I went so heavy on the shading and the shadows I end up making her look old older than her picture I end up making her look sunken and drawn in uh, it doesn't look that way quite yet but I will show you at the stage when I realized that I think I've done her a disservice uh, and I decide to change a lot of what I'm seeing and just kind of make it up as I go. So I'm trying to bring out this out, this side of the, the, the nose out just a little bit. I'm just, just ever so slightly, I'm increasing the width of the nose on this side. Because I felt like it, it needed to come out more than what I had it. Now, but the problem with that, though, is since I change where the nose is at, that changes the angle of where the mouth goes. Remember, I based the mouth, I based the corners of the mouth on where the nose was and so because I changed the side of the nose that's gonna in turn change any other feature that you base off that measurement so I'm trying to you know I'm going back to this eye again I made this eye a little too if you look notice what I'm doing I made this eye a little too open and not as squinty as you see in the picture that's just that's just something that happens with me it's something that happens probably with you if it does let me know you end up interpreting things different than what you're looking at it's very weird it's a, it's a very weird thing to see how your brain works you know that my brain drawing this thought I was drawing it exactly as I was seeing it. But now that we're looking at it, we go, it's, you know, wow, you made her eye way too open. So here I'm drawing these little smile lines too on the side of her eye. But again, it makes her look older than she really is. So I end up correcting this, but... I've learned in this drawing, you don't have to draw every line that you see. You can either choose to leave it out, or you can leave it as a very small, faint line, but you don't got to draw it as dark as I did. I mean, this just looks really dark right here. 
So I'm going to start to work on it and try and lighten it up. And again, the final picture looks nothing like this. But this just goes to show you the process of what it took for me to get to that final picture. All the mistakes I made. All the little details that I end up changing. You know, sometimes you see a picture of an artist that an artist drew and you think, wow, he nailed that. But you don't realize it could have looked 180 degrees different. Uh, than what the final picture looked like. You don't see all the erasing that sometimes goes into these things, all the changes that are made. So watching this video, I want you to realize that I do a lot of changing on this picture. And, and also as artists, we end up being hard on ourselves. I'm very hard on myself. If I didn't show you the picture of the model on the screen right now, if you just saw me drawing this and all you saw was my sketch pad, you might think to yourself that that looks really, really good. It's looking like a person. It's coming together nicely. But see, when you could see the reference picture, when you could see what I'm trying to draw, then you could see all these mistakes. You could see where I get things wrong. A lot of artists don't do that. If you look at a lot of artists on YouTube, make a mental note. Uh, next time you're watching artists on YouTube, how many are showing you the picture they're looking at? I mean, a lot do. Don't get me wrong. A lot do. But, but, but notice how many don't. Notice how many are just showing you draw a picture and you never know how wrong they might be or how off they might be from what the original picture is. Um, so if I wasn't showing you the original picture, you might be thinking, man, Jeff, you're an amazing artist. Look at that. looks great. It looks, you know, it looks like a nice, nice lady you're drawing. But when you see what I'm trying to draw, now you could see all my mistakes. You could see, oh yeah, Jeff, you made that eye a little too big. Oh yeah, Jeff, that mouth doesn't look exactly like it. So it it it, it makes me, you know, really self-conscious to 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 draw like this and to show you my mistakes. I get self-conscious about it, but I do it because I want you also to see that, um, you know, we all make mistakes. I want you to see where I'm getting something wrong. I want to see what I'm getting wrong. I want to look back on this video a year from now, two years from now, and go, wow, look how far I've come. Look where, how I messed up here, but now I've learned from that, you know. And also let it be known, you know, that you could still... You, it's okay to draw and not have something be exactly like the reference and still feel proud of yourself as an artist that you're able to draw anything, that you're able to draw something uh, that looks like a person. That's, that's a huge accomplishment. And, you know, even looking back and forth here, I, I'm still, you know, you could still make the argument to go, yeah, that looks like her. I think that looks like her. Sure. Um, even though I don't necessarily think it looks like her, I see a resemblance. Um, but, you know, that's okay. That's why I do these videos. That's why I put the picture up there so you could see what I'm looking at, what I'm trying to get down here. So, again, the smile lines, I don't want to go too dark. I don't want it to look like wrinkles. I don't want it to look like, uh, again, like the Joker from Batman. I want it to look, you know, I, I want to put the, you know, I want to put it in there, but I don't want to make it too much of the focus. You know, I don't want the focus to be on the smile lines. And you could see there on the chin, there's these dark lines right here. And I put those in the drawing, but 
again, I, I went too dark on them. I end up basically getting rid of them in the end. Yeah, that's one thing I also learned, not necessarily with her, because she is pretty and she's not uh, an old lady or anything like that. But let's say like you're going to draw a picture of somebody old. Again, you don't have to put in every wrinkle. Uh, you can choose to leave wrinkles out altogether if you're drawing somebody old. All that's going to do is make them look young, and it's, but it's still going to look like them. And so it actually might turn into be a better picture if you leave out things like wrinkles or leave out certain features. Uh, you still can make them look like the picture and it could be more flattering. So I, I was kind of learning that myself on this picture with her smile lines. You know, I, I, you don't have to really emphasize them as much as you know they're there. You don't have to emphasize it as much because, uh, you know, you, it might be more flattering to, to not have it in there, to make it look softer. So here I'm just kind of blending in the shadows again. You know, I still think it looks okay at this point. If you've never uh, been to my channel, I just want to also thank you at this point while we're in the middle of the drawing. Thank you for watching and for following me. I do have a picture, or a picture, <laughs> I do have a portrait come out uh, every Monday and Wednesday. Well, every, every week I have a new portrait. Mondays is this narrated tutorial version. Wednesdays, or no, did I say Wednesday? I meant Thursday. Mondays is the tutorial, Thursdays is the time lapse. Uh, and then as I get better and faster, I will increase that to maybe two drawings a week. But I don't want to put out too much content too fast. These are long videos. I do want people to watch them and learn. Uh, and if I put them out too fast or too close to each other, um, I think they're just going to be, it's going to be too much. So here I am again looking at the mouth. I'm trying to you know, shorten the smile a little bit. I feel like I had too much teeth showing, so kind of shorten, shorten that. I do spend a lot of time trying to get the mouth just right. Just blending in around the mouth. Again, remember, I went so dark in the initial shading that I have to kind of darken all this other stuff in. But I do end up feeling like it made her too dark. And sometimes the darker you make something, the more sunken in things look. Um, and that's where I felt the drawing started to go. That's the direction we're kind of heading in. Keep that in mind that I feel like it's going to start to look older than it should be because of how dark I made it. So we're trying to just get the hair outline in here. Just scribbling it in. Because I'm have the face pretty much down, uh, that's where I'm kind of working on the, the neck a little bit. Let's back it up a little bit so you could see. So I'm trying to just, you know, I want to get this. I'm asking myself, how much do I want to show on the picture? So I want to get at least her, her shoulders in over on this side. I'm kind of just getting her neck down and then uh, where the line comes down for her shoulder. So I'm, I'm kind of penciling in the shadow here underneath where I think the shadow goes for the neck. And again, I'm drawing all these sort of shadow lines in, but I end up 
uh, going a little too hard with it. So back to the hair, just kind of getting the hair shaped down. Kind of flicks out this side of the hair, flicks out over here. Down here is kind of fans out and it's dark. Right here is all dark. So I'm doing this all right now, even though it's all going to be smudged with my hand. I'm doing it because I'm trying to see how it's going to change the face. You know, the face looks really dark, but what's it going to look like with the hair? So I want to try and get this in here. Up here is all dark right here. So I'm adding all this dark tone in. You know, and I guess it doesn't look too bad, the face, but it does, ch it does need to change. Now, another thing to keep in mind, uh, just as an artist, whenever you're drawing something, if you're not super happy with it, Try to remind yourself of how far you've come. Try and remind yourself that you're already drawing way better than you used to draw. Okay? And that even if you do something and you're not that happy with it, that you're going to do your best to, you know, make it as best as you can make it. That's all you can do. Make it as, as good as you can make it. And you learn from it. So I'm trying to mark in here just with my pencil, sort of the, the shadow, the cast shadow that her face is making that's casting this shadow underneath. So I'm using my pencil to kind of mark that in there. Checking the angles. I think it might have to come up a little bit. So maybe up here, kind of changing things a little bit. Also, while I'm doing this, if you look at the mouth, <laughs> back to the mouth, uh, if you look at the teeth, right below the teeth, how it's dark. Because it's dark there, it gives the impression like that's her bottom teeth in shadow. And we don't want that. So it just goes to show you how sometimes a shadow can change the picture. So you look at her picture, she's, you don't see any of her bottom teeth. That's all top teeth in the picture. Now you look at what I drew. Because of the shadow that I put on the bottom lip, uh, in contrast to the teeth, it makes it look like her mouth is more open. And so that's something that I end up having to correct. Just goes to show you how changing shadows can change things about the picture. You know, in my mind, at this stage of the drawing, I'm thinking that all I see is teeth and bottom lip. But now that you look back on it on the camera, you could see, wait a minute, that's not her bottom lip. Yeah, you, you, that shadow is supposed to be uh, you know, the, on her lip, but it actually translates as being inside of her mouth. So these are all things that you, you kind of learn by looking back at the picture and going, oh, wait a minute. You know, you need to, you need to be aware of what sh the shadow's doing. The way you have the shadow makes it look like her mouth is more open than it really is. Even though you mean for that to be her lip, but you're, it's actually looking like it's inside of her mouth. So we're almost at, almost at the one hour mark of this video. And because this is 
playing at twice the speed, that means this is almost the two hour mark of my drawing. So in real life, I was about two hours of my time invested into this drawing to get what you see right here. So I just say all that because I get every now and then on my, my drawings, I get a comment. Somebody says, how long did it take you to draw this? Uh, it's hard to tell when I have it sped up, but at this point in my drawing, this is what it looks like at about the two hour mark. At least this drawing. It was about two hours that it took me to get what you see. Now later on in this video, I don't, it's not sped up at two times the speed. I speed it up at six times the speed. And I only do that at the very, very end when I'm doing little tiny changes. Um, because that just looks better faster. But at this stage when I'm still, you know, sort of mapping out the drawing for you guys, I like it to be as close to real speed as possible. That way you could see, you know, what I'm doing clearly. I can talk over it and then not have it speed by too fast. You know, this is only double the speed of my real drawing. So again, I'm, I'm trying to mimic here this dark area of the hair. I'm just using my pencil and putting that shape in there. Comes down a little bit, a little darker on this side, but not as dark. So I'm trying to ask myself those questions, you know, where is the dark spots of the hair and keep that in. You know, right here on the side of the face is dark. So I'm putting that in there. This part of the hair is a little bit darker, so I'm just lightly putting in a darker tone. And then underneath the ear, let's see, here's the ear right here. Underneath here is all dark, you can see. So I'm just gonna darken that in. Just shade it in, and then use my finger to kinda just smear it in. So you could see it, it looks similar to the picture. You could you could tell that I'm you know the reference is what I'm looking at. It's just I always ask myself, did I capture her likeness? Could you look at that picture if you didn't know her and then recognize her? I do think I missed the mark on that. But again, as a portrait, as a drawing does it you know look okay yeah it looks okay I gotta I can't always beat myself up even though I may not be completely happy with it now again what I want you to start noticing is and, and I'll point it out more as we go along but notice all the lines around the mouth that I'm trying to stay true and keep in there because they're in her picture. You could see the lines of her smile. You could see that I've kept those in my picture. But I end up not liking it because it, it's, I, I feel like it was making, my drawing was making her look old and drawn in and super like, like, not wrinkly, but just she was looking way older with those lines in. You're starting to see that now. It gets worse, trust me, but you could start to see what I was feeling unhappy about. All those lines were making her face look like thinner than it, than it really is, not as full and vibrant. So when I draw blonde hair, I try and put this tone down so I can use the eraser to get these highlights. So I'm trying to, you'll see I put in this tone and then just use an eraser to give these bright spots. Now back to the mouth, I'm trying to straighten out where the teeth are. Again, I feel like the mouth is looking a little too round. You know, I recognize it needs to be straighter across. But I'm also at the point now where, you know, I don't really want to erase the mouth. 
I'm kind of stuck with what I've already put down there. I'm already kind of stuck with knowing that I didn't exactly get the shape right, but trying to keep what I have in there. And again, that's okay. It's okay, you know, to not, you know, like there used to be a point where I'd go, oh, it doesn't look like it. I give up. No, no, no. Don't give up. When you're at the stage of your drawing where you feel like it's a disaster, just go with it. So here I am trying to shorten up that darkness a little bit, which raises the lower lip. See, the lower lip is right now raising up to meet the teeth. But then I have to bring up the shadow on the bottom or else it keeps the lower lip looking bigger than it is. So I keep erasing sort of the bottom lip and raising it up so I can make the mouth look a little more closed. And these are all things that you learn as you go along like, oh, wow, look how much the shadows change things, you know. So I'm kind of shading in the sides of the teeth. I don't want them to be as bright as the front of the mouth. So over here, just shade this in a little bit. Shading in the side. So again, with teeth, just try and work on that top, the gum line. I'm just working on the little gum line. I'm not trying to draw lines all down throughout each tooth. Uh, if I did that, it would make it would look too, it would look like uh, piano teeth. And we don't want that. I'm trying to look at the shapes of her, the, the teeth, and just try and mimic that shape. but I still don't have that bottom lip exactly right. Now notice I'm trying to get the bottom of the teeth here, but in doing so, it's adding a darker value towards the lip, and that's gonna make her mouth look a little more open than I want it to look. You know, just adding this line here, it's gonna give you the optical illusion that her mouth is more open and I don't want that. I end up having to correct that again. I go back and forth with it. Again, this is one of the things I've learned, and maybe you can learn too. Just learning how shadows can change things, you know. Now, overall, at this stage, again, this drawing, it's really um, darker then the final drawing ended up. I end up toning this down a lot. Um, and I guess there's two schools of thought, right? You can either erase everything and make it lighter, or you can darken everything and bring it more in line with it, everything. See, like right now, the, like the wrinkles around the mouth those are very contrasty. It's very, you know, I mean, it really pops and jumps out at you. Um, so I could either erase the darkness and make it all lighter, or I probably could have darkened the light areas and brought them closer to the other dark areas that you see. It just all depends. I ended up erasing a lot of it and lightening the picture as a whole, losing some of the contrast. So again, because this mouth is such a big part of her personality, I end up working a lot on it. Um, I'm trying to just shade in the lips here a little bit. You know, I'm trying to figure out where the shadows might be, where it's lighter. 
you know. So it's still kind of blotchy. You know, we still have a lot of smoothing in to do, especially under here, under the neck. So I'm just trying to shade everything in to get some skin tone down here in this area. But the problem I'm going to have, and you're going to see, is it ends up looking just really blotchy. It looks really... I mean, it's just not natural looking. Maybe that's what I'm trying to get at. It wasn't looking natural to me. Now look at her right eye, the one that I said is kind of big. See those little eraser marks next to the eye? Look how those ma that makes her look older than she is. If you look carefully at the picture, you could see it to the right of her eye. There is It is lighter, but because of the way that I have it, how light it is in my picture, it just makes it look like old and wrinkly. And that's definitely not how she is in this picture. So I'm trying to get this mouth just right. You know, a big part of it's the shadow under the lips. That determines how thick the lip is. So I'm, I'm making sure that shadow's in there. I'm trying to see how far out does it go. I'm trying to make the front teeth look a little bit close, you know, stand out closer to the light, so I'm erasing a little bit on the teeth. I'm not touching the back teeth, just working on the front teeth here. And just by erasing a little bit, it brings them forward. Notice that? Now it looks a little bit more closer to the light. And, and even though the, the, the mouth and the smile isn't, you know, an exact representation of hers in, in the picture I do like how the mouth is sort of turning out it's you know it, it, it's looking like a mouth it's looking like a nice smile the teeth are looking pretty natural So again, I'm not too sure on the nose. I'm thinking the nose needs to be a little wider on, on the left-hand side of the picture. Um, it's looking a little too narrow, which is funny because when I drew it, I thought everything was fine, but apparently whenever I draw noses, I end up drawing them. <laughs> I end up drawing them either too small or too long or Something about them I don't get exactly right. I also wasn't sure about the space between the nose and the mouth. You know, your brain tells you that there's a big space between there. But if you look at my, you know, look at the drawing, it looks like I, I put way too much there than needed to be there. too much space. So sometimes when it comes to drawing, you know, like I said, you're looking at a reference, but don't get down on yourself if it doesn't turn out exactly like the reference. After all, it is a reference. You're using it for reference. And your brain will usually, might see something a little bit differently. It might look a little different to you than it does to me. 
you know that's what's that's what's kind of neat about art is it's you know it's it's however you want to interpret things you might want to make somebody look younger than they are you might want to make them look older than they are it's whatever choices you make that's the choice that you know you're you're choosing to do So I'm kind of looking at the neck here. I'm kind of seeing where her, you know, I don't know the proper terminology of anatomy, but uh, the lines in the neck, the shadows in the neck, I'm drawing them in here. But again, beginner mistake, I'm doing them too dark or darker than they should be. So again, if you draw something too dark, you you have two options. You use your eraser to lighten it, or you darken everything else around it to bring it closer in value to each other so it's not so harsh and contrasty. Uh, and in this drawing, you're going to see I end up having things way too contrasty, too dark and too light. Uh, and I end up choosing to go lighter and erase the darkness um, as as a choice. But you know, even even now looking back on this drawing, if I go back and forth, look at the drawing, look at the picture, look at the drawing, look at the picture, I'm still seeing a resemblance. So I'm still seeing what I was seeing while I was drawing it at this stage. I'm still seeing how uh, I'm okay with it. It's not until I take a break, you know. I'll take a break for an hour, two hours, come back to the drawing, and then look at it with fresh eyes. And when I do that, that's when I can see that... uh, all the, the changes and the mistakes and the things that I'm not happy with. It's when I come back after a break. Okay, so back to the eye. I'm just kind of making sure I get the shape down. Again, I kind of have a habit of making eyes look too wide, too open. So I was trying to just make sure I get the shape of the eye down as best as I can. This eye, I'm trying to shorten down because I do realize I made it a little too open. But um, a little later on, I actually erase it and kind of shrink it a little bit. But again, I you also have to ask yourself, is this really the problem? Is this really taking away from, you know, your drawing? Um, and if it's not, then just leave it in there. So the the shirt, you know, I just, I noticed she's got these horizontal stripes. I don't want to put too much into it. So I'm just going to put in sort of, you know, right now I'm kind of putting in a little tone, but I'm, I'm kind of shading sideways just to get in very faint suggestions of the the direction of the shirt. And I'm just using some compressed charcoal in doing this. Just... Do that and then use my fingers to kind of just blend it all in and that's it. I'm not spending any more time on the shirt. I'm pretty sure that's all I do is what you just saw. (laughs) Just kept it really rough. Again, we're still at only a half speed for the drawing 
pretty soon we're going to go to six times the speed so you're going to see it speed up pretty significantly but this is all still me going half speed just so you could see exactly what uh, details I was trying to, to get here. Now again, up by the temples here, look how dark I had the shadows. Because it goes from that dark to that light, it make, it, it, in my opinion, it makes her head look like it's on two different planes. It goes from like one plane to like shadow really fast. Like it just, it shouldn't, it's, it, it shouldn't be that drastic of a plane change. So I'm kind of using my eraser to kind of bring out the, the lighter parts of the face. You know, here's her, on her cheekbone here. This is all lighter. But because I went so dark on the cheeks, so dark on the side planes of the face, um, it's really, really contrasting these light areas. So much so that, again, it's making her look gaunt and sunken in and making her look wrinkled. Like, look at her mouth. It's looking, in my opinion, leave me a comment if you, if you think otherwise, but it's making her look too old. And that was the problem with, that I learned on this drawing is I just, I went too dark and then, so therefore when I started to erase these highlights and lighter areas, it contrasted too much with the darkness. Look at this right here with, where, where the eyebrow is to where the temple is. Look at that change, how light to dark it goes. You don't see that on the original picture. Therefore, it's making her look old and different, in my opinion. And so coming up here in the next few minutes is about the area where I'm realizing, oh crap, I have a big turd on my hands. I just spent two and a half hours drawing a big turd that I'm not happy with. And what am I gonna do? I'm almost at the I'm almost at that point. Another thing, I mean, look at the neck, look at the chest, how blotchy and even though you could see I drew all the same lines where the lines are supposed to go and the dark spots and the light spots of the chest and the neck, that's all true to what you see in the picture, but it doesn't look good on my drawing. It looks too, like, unnatural. And so I'm trying to, I'm working a little on the hair here because I'm thinking I'm almost done. I'm thinking this is the final touch. Usually that's what I do is the hair is sort of the last thing that I add final touches on. But I'm really starting to stare at the picture and go, okay, um, something's not right here. And I'm not exactly sure what it is at this stage but just so you know this is very important just so you know at this stage of the drawing I'm thinking I'm almost done I'm thinking I'm almost done until I take a break and I look at it and I realize you have something very very wrong she's looks her chin looks way too thin and skinny than what the picture looks like. Look at her chin. Because of, the, because of how I have those lines, it makes it's making her chin look like it's skinnier than it is. You see that? I want you to see that because I did not see that. And I'm telling you that because even I'm still learning. 
even I still get to this stage of a drawing where I think I'm almost done and then I don't realize these big, huge mistakes that are staring me in the face. Look at her chin and how I have those lines. I'm trying to mimic what you see on the picture, but because I did it the way I did, so dark and so light, it's making her chin look like it's pinched in. And so we end up fixing that, or trying to fix it. But this is about the stage where I thought I was almost done. I thought I was blending this all, this area here. I thought I was all like getting there until I take a break and then I realize, wow, this isn't even close to being done. How can you think this is even close to being done? And in the past, I've stopped my pictures around this point. I thought, I can't do anything else to this picture. I thought to myself, this is as good as I'm going to be able to get it. And I guess I'm just going to have to settle for what I did because there ain't no way I'm going to be able to change what I'm looking at right here. That's what I'm thinking at this stage. But pretty soon, coming up here, I'm about to turn off the camera and turn it back on. And that's going to signal my, uh, my changing thought process. Because when I take a break here, that's when I, get, I sit back and look at the picture and realize I need to really do something here. Because I am way off. See, I'm trying to get the darkness. I see this darkness on her cheeks. I'm trying to get that in there. But because everything is so dark, it just makes her look... It's making her look skinnier. The more shadow I'm adding to her cheeks, it's making her look... I mean, in my opinion, it's making her look more drawn in. See, I'm not sure right there that, that, that part of her jaw, that's wrong. That, that angle's wrong. It, it's curving in. It's just making her, it's changing the shape of her face. Again, I'm not seeing this at this stage. I have to take a break. And when I take a break and I stare at it after, a, you know, coming back to it, then you start seeing all these errors. So right there, boom. Now I'm moving fast. I probably took about an hour break. I came back and I realized all these problems. The nose needs to be bigger. The mouth needs to kind of come up a little bit. You see, I erased that side of the face. And also notice I'm moving six times faster than normal. So now we're going to zip through this. Everything you see from this point on, the next, you know, 20 minutes or so of this drawing, it's me correcting everything. So I'm trying to, I extend the nose a little bit. I'm trying to make it a little bit bigger. So this, this drawing, like I said, it took about two to three hours to draw. And then it took another hour or so of correcting. All these corrections that I, that I noticed. So I'm trying to get that angle of the face. I'm trying to you know, lighten up things. Things just look a little too dark. I'm using my eraser, slowly bringing down, like slowly erasing the shadows. See, I'm, I, I noticed the mouth just, it was just too much shadow up here in this temple. It was too much. I'm just trying to use my eraser and bring it down. Now, the problem is I went so dark originally, I couldn't really erase a lot that I wanted to. 
especially up in the temple area. Uh, but again, I just something I learned on this drawing. So I'm trying to erase and then I'm trying to blend it back in together. Erase as much as I can and then just blend it back in. So that you're gonna see the mouth changing shape a little bit. You know, it's, I need to bring up that side of the mouth. So here I'm trying to lighten those, those things that look like age wrinkles. I'm lightening up now. Lightening the eyes. I think the eyes looked a little too dark. I'm still not happy with that one eye, this eye there, but it's just something I'm going to keep working on here a little bit as we go on. So I'm trying to raise the cheeks up a little bit. And the other problem is now that I'm erasing a lot of the stuff I drew, it's going to make her look a lot blotchier. I'm going to have to re-smooth out everything all over again. I created so much more work for myself by erasing all, this, all the dark tones I put down. I really learned a lot on this drawing. And hopefully you learn too that, you know, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to start changing everything. Look at how much I'm changing from what I had before. But I saw it as a challenge. I saw it like, okay, you know, let's just see what we can do here. Let's just see how much we can change. It's always harder for me too because I'm filming it. So I know people are watching it. If I wasn't filming, I probably wouldn't have as much pressure on me, but there's a lot more pressure. So I'm trying to make this eye a little squintier, trying to bring it in a little bit. Same with this eye. Notice I'm erasing the, the, the lines underneath the eye and just kind of adding some shadow. I'm trying to smooth everything out, make her look younger. I'm telling myself, don't just draw it because you see it. Just draw what you want people to see. So I'm trying to make the mouth a little more even. Um, it looks It's looking really bad right now. So I'm going to try and raise it a little bit if I can. And I'm jumping all over the place just because I'm... I'm just kind of freaking out. <laughs> now this eye is way too dark, but we end up kind of fixing that. So I think her overall, the, the, the overall shape of her hair, at least on that side, is fine. This side over on the here, we need to change the shape a little bit. Um, it hasn't quite come out as far on the right side. Uh, we'll correct that in just a minute. For now, I just I think I think the nose is looking a little better. We we've, we've widened it a little bit. So it's looking more proportionate to how she, hers really is. We need to work on the side here, this cheek here. I think it needs to be a little bit more rounder than I have it. So I'm trying to round it out a little bit. So again, working on, you know, trying to lighten up things for the cheeks. You know, I, 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 want it, I want it to be where her cheeks are higher up. Notice I still have those little like wrinkle lines on the side of her eye. I need to get rid of those. So here it's trying to work on the mouth a little bit more. Just, you know, I just... There's, this side of the mouth is too far down, so I'm trying to lift it up a little bit. And 
and also smoothing out everything because I'm deleting deleting because I'm erasing a lot of the shadows I'm trying to blend in and just make it more uniform make it more consistent with everything so here I'm blending in I'm getting rid of those those wrinkles that I had by the eyes trying to blend in the temple so it's not so contrasty using my eraser and then using the blending stump to kind of like blend it together so it's not as blotchy see that I couldn't really erase everything because I like I said I was so dark originally but using my eraser I'm kind of knocking it down then blending it back in and that just tones it down a little bit smooths it out so we need to work on the mouth right here the lip I gotta <clears throat> bring that up it still looks like the mouth's a little too open because of the darkness underneath the teeth so I'm trying to work on that I'm trying to make it so the mouth doesn't look open like it does right now So see, these are all just the final touches of the drawing. Looks like we have about 13 minutes left or so of the video uh, to see these changes in fast motion. Um, so you can kind of see. See, this, this would be a lot more boring if it was done uh, in slower speed because one, I'm jumping all over the place. Uh, but two, it's just very, very tiny changes hard to see unless you watch it a little sped up to see it you know to, to really watch how it changes things so I'm trying to get the shadow underneath the nose um, I want to make sure you could still see that underside of the nose Now notice the mouth's looking a little better, and by mouth I mean like around the chin. The, I got rid of those wrinkle lines that we saw before. I decided not to put it in the picture. Uh, even though you could see it on the reference, I decided to just leave that out. Use a creative license as an artist and just decide, you know what, I'm not going to put certain things in the picture. I don't think it adds to her likeness. Uh, I think it ages her if I put it in the way I'm doing it. So let me just leave it out. Now right here I'm trying to raise her cheek a little bit. And I'm also trying to get this angle of the smile line down. But I don't want it so dark. You know, I don't want it to look like a, you know, wrinkle on her face. So I'm going to lighten it a little bit. See, with my eraser, I'm just lightening it. Because I don't want to draw, you know, I don't want to draw attention to everything. Your brain will fill in a lot of this stuff. So I'm just, again, trying to work on the cheeks, raise the cheeks up a little bit. I don't want them to look too droopy. Again, work on that bottom lip. Just trying to erase right up to the teeth right up to the teeth but then I gotta bring the bottom lip up a little bit too because we're changing the direction so erase this a little bit don't want the bottom lip to look too big so I'm bringing it up with the shadow right here And then the eye, I realize I'm trying to make this a little bit smaller. I can't do much with it. I've already kind of gone too dark. So I'm trying to like make this eye just a little bit smaller if I can. You know, bring out the eyelid. I 
I kind of lost the eyelid on on both side, both eyes actually. So I'm trying to increase the side here a little bit, make her face a little more round. So I'm trying to round out the side here, which I'm glad I did because it looked a little too skinny or, you know, by skinny, I, I mean like drawn in. But now it looks a little too round. So I, I kind of play back and back and forth with that shape, the side of her face over here. It's looking a little better now. So I'm, again, I'm working on the nose, trying to make sure we get that bottom plane in here, right down in here. I want there to be a shadow, not quite that dark, so. But I want you to be able to see like underneath the nose. Okay, so now I'm lightening the whole chest area. I'm, again, taking creative license, telling myself, yeah, you know what, all those lines and things, yeah, you could see them on the picture, but do I really need them in there? Not to the extent that I had them in there. So I just used my eraser to lighten everything, and now it, the suggestion of them is there without me actually drawing it in like I had it. So I'm trying to, again, I know this eye is a little big. I know it's a little dark. I keep kind of messing with the eyes. Now I'm trying to raise the smile a little bit. See, I took away the side of the smile. We're going to raise it up a little bit. Just trying to bring it a little bit higher up. And I haven't quite done it yet, but we're, we're, gonna, we're going to. So again, working on that bottom lip. Jump into the chin, you know, all this stuff. I'm just all over the place because I keep on seeing things. And I'll also like take more frequent breaks at this stage. I'll make some corrections. I'll turn off the camera. I'll come back to the drawing in about 30 minutes. Something else will pop out at me. Oh, I need to do this right here. I need to change this part about the smile. And I'll work on it. And I'll take another break. Come back, take some more notes. Oh, I need to change this part of the cheek. I need to round it off a little bit. I need to blend in this. These are all, this part of the drawing is all me implementing the changes that I've seen and making mistakes on and trying to fix. And at this part of the drawing, it's important that you take your own notes, that you say, what don't I like about the drawing? Why don't I like it? Can I fix it? So I'm telling myself, I don't like the mouth. What's wrong with it? It needs to be higher. Can I fix it? So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to raise up the mouth a little bit by the corners. Now notice the face is a lot more smoother now than I had it before, not quite as blotchy. So I'm happy with that aspect. I'm happy that I didn't stop when I thought I was going to stop, when it looked, you know, really wrinkly and old and, you know, I didn't stop there, which I normally would have in my past. My past drawings, I would have stopped there and thought I was done. This is what you're seeing here is me trying to take it to the next level, go beyond what I thought I could do and change things. So I'm realizing I kind of miss the likeness a little bit, but I'm trying to make it a nice drawing. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to, you know, look at the angle of the mouth here and I'm trying to make little adjustments. Little adjustments can make a huge difference. Looking back and forth at the drawing, back and forth, realizing, you know, this could be lighter up here you know, lighten this area, you know, 
I need to erase this part, so I erase this. I, you know, touching up the bottom of the teeth to get the shape down, you know. I'm thinking the overall face is fine, but see here I'm gonna try and I'm trying to see if I can shrink this eye a little bit. I'm you know, I, I'm not gonna make it as squinty as, as is in the reference picture, but I'm trying to lower it just a hair and bring out that upper eyelid. And this eyelid needs to come out on this other side too. So notice you'll see me doing a lot of erasing and then I blend it in. Erase and blend it in. That's just a nice way of knocking down a value. Erase and then blend, and it, uh, it takes it down a step. So see, look at all these little tiny changes. In the last four minutes of this video, it's just very, very tiny changes. But we're slowly bringing this portrait to a close. You know, I could see the resemblance um, I'm happy that I didn't give up on it. I know that I didn't nail it like I did my last drawing. But, again, if you didn't see the reference picture, you would probably think, oh, that's a nice drawing of a lady. That's a nice drawing of a woman. You wouldn't know what I'm looking at. Um, so, knowing that what I'm looking at and seeing the mistakes or seeing... The difference is, um, that is the challenge. That is the challenge, to, to not beat yourself up over things. Because you are doing this freehand. You are doing this only with your eyes and your hands. You're not doing any rulers, no grids. It's just your interpretation of a picture you're looking at. So again, I'm bringing out here with the eye, the eyelid, that we somehow lost along the way. Reshaping the eyebrow just a little bit. I needed to have it curve a little bit more, so I'm just erasing and blending so I get this little slight little curve in there. And then I'm going to lighten the eyes a little bit. You know, her one eye is definitely darker in real life or in the picture, so I, I do have it that way in the drawing. And here I am just bringing that mouth up a little, just very slightly. Just that little curve at the end of the smile, and we're just about there. We've just about taken this drawing to the maximum limit that we possibly could. Notice it's a lot more smoother than we had it. She looks a lot younger than we originally were making her look. Um, so I'm happy with that. and changing you know last minute touches to the hair because I noticed the hair needed to come out a little bit more but looking back and forth between my drawing and the picture you could see there is a resemblance there some of you if you think I actually got her likeness down please hit me uh, leave me a comment and hit me hit me <laughs> hit me Leave me a thumbs up uh, if you liked it. I really, uh, really helps me out. Lets me know that I'm doing, you know, something good here uh, with these drawings and these tutorial videos. Um, but this is it. This is the final. This is what I ended up with. The final touches of the picture. 
And uh, there we go. That's it right there. So I really appreciate you watching. Uh, please check out these other videos on the screen, some of my other stuff. And uh, with that being said, I will be back in just a few days with more drawing. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.